Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's try to figure out how much power a helicopter needs to lift itself off the ground in a time of, let's see, three and a half seconds. It will have gained a height of 8.2 meters and a velocity of 7 meters per second in a vertical direction. The mass of the helicopter is 810 kilograms. How do we do this one? Well, let's start with our regular equation again. Start off with the work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy should equal any final potential energy plus final kinetic energy plus any energy loss due to friction or wind resistance or anything like that. When we take a look at this equation, notice that we did not have any height in the, in the beginning. We were at the, on the ground, so there's zero potential energy, and we were not yet moving upward, so there was zero kinetic energy initially. Also, there's no friction or anything like that, so no energy is presumed to be lost. So any work put into the system is equal to the, the potential energy gained and the kinetic energy gained. So work is equal to potential energy, that would be mgh, plus kinetic energy, which would be one-half mv final squared. And of course, that would be h final. Let's call this h final. All right, let's figure out what that is equal to. So any work put in is equal to the mass, 810 times g, 9.8, times the height, which is 8.2. So that's the increase in potential energy, plus one-half times the mass, which is 810, times v squared, which is 7 squared. That would be the increase in kinetic energy. So we have 810 times 9.8 times 8.2. We add to that, well, let me write down what the result is. That's kind of interesting. So work is equal to, that would be, uh, wow, 65,000, 65,091, 0.6 joules. Now, of course, that's more, way more significant figures than we need, but we'll just keep them for now. Plus 0 0.5 times 810 oop, oop, times 49. And that would be, uh, wow, way more than that. So that would be a three, whew, so plus 3,209,000. And 333.4. Again, way more significant figures than we need. Let me try that again because that seems kind of interesting. So equals, let me try that again. This is not the right answer. That seemed a little bit bigger than it should have been. Uh, what I get instead is 19,845. That's a lot better. 19,845 joules. Okay, always do a quick check. If the number seems odd, then uh, try again. So 810 times 0 0.5 times 49, 19,845. Okay, now we add that to plus 65,091.6. So we have the amount of work done is equal to 84,936.6 joules. Again, we're keeping a bunch of extra significant figures. Now, they're not asking for work done, they're asking for power, but power, by definition, is equal to work done divided by time. So in this case, the work done, 84,936.6 joules, divided by the time spent of 3.5 seconds. So divide this by 3.5, and we get about 24,270 watts. So that's the power required. Now we want to convert that to horsepower. So we have uh, one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So then we're going to divide this by 746. And that gives us 32.5 horsepower. All right. So that's how we do that. In this case, we had two things, two forms of energy we were gaining by putting in work. We were gaining potential energy and kinetic energy together, the total energy gained, which is the work done, and then the power is the work done, energy gained divided by time. That's how we do that one.